Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out an awesome program called Blockbench. Now, I checked out Blockbench a little while back, about seven months ago, I think it was, uh, and then back in 2021 or something to that effect, and it had just had a major update. So right now, Blockbench 5.0 beta is available. So come here, you can check it out. It is available currently at beta 3. So the beta program started at about a month and a half ago, uh, and since then they've had two updates to it. And there is a lot that was added in this particular beta that makes the program even nicer to work with. Now, one of the major things is a new user interface. We'll get back to that in a minute. I'll show you side by side compared to the 4.x to the 5.x version. By the way, if you do want to go ahead and check this one out and you run the application version, it's a little bit tricky. What you want to do is download the installer version of it. And then what you do is you come into it and you go to preferences settings and you will find under application you want it to say to update to pre-release versions this will then uh, eventually when you launch it the next time it will do a download of the update you can install the new update and that is how you get 5.0 there's no download available for it right now so if you want to go ahead and check it out using one of the download versions that is what you need to do so this is available for windows mac and linux plus there is a web version of it available as well and you can check it out on the web as well which is very cool so what you see here this is a 3d modeling tool it's basically made out of Minecraft style cubes. You can see all of the various different pieces that go together to create this robot. By the way, not my robot. I downloaded it off the interwebs. Uh, so this is not my work. I am not good at this program. Just one of those things I want you to know. So you see here, you do your model basically composed out of multiple compound shapes. And then each one in turn can have a, a texture attached to it. You see the UVs can be edited up here. Quick, easy UV editing of your model. And then on top of your editing tools that you have over here, things like a knife tool for cutting a shape in half, or you can basically uh, move pieces of a tool. It's very straightforward with the stuff that you are working with here. Uh, on top of that, so in addition to uh, the modeling side of things or the composition side of things, you also have painting tools where you can literally just come in here and paint directly on your surfaces. It makes painting super easy because you don't really need to worry about texture mapping or UV mapping or anything like that. It's literally like drawing pixels onto 3D Lego blocks is how you create your models here. And on top of that, we also have animation tools like what you see here. So this guy is animated, animation three. Let's go ahead and see that in action right there. So you can animate everything over time, uh, a very uh, powerful tool capable of doing a hell of a lot. And at the same time, you can export this out to a variety of different formats. You can also export it out uh, as uh, an animated GIF if you want to do. There's tools for that as well. But you see here, you can get it out to pretty much any um, kind of application you want. So GLTF, OBJ, FBX, STL, that's new to this particular release. Kalata, uh, which is pretty much going away. Uh, you can export it directly to Sketchfab if you wish as well. You got tools here, again, animation tools here uh, for all the various different things. So when you switch between those modes, you'll notice all of the tools up here. So now we're in editing mode. You got the image editing tools over here. And then we're in uh, manipulation mode. You got all your various different tools over here. And then you got tools for doing things like uh, mirroring while you model. So things on the left and the right are identical, etc. A lot of really cool things. And in this release, well, in addition to this new user interface, uh, we got a couple of other powerful new features. Now, the first one here, let me just go ahead and create a new generic model. So this again, what you'd use if you're making Godot Unreal or Unity model here. Uh, let's go ahead and create our model like so. Uh, what you'll notice as you come up over here, one of the major new features is this. They now have this new spline tool, which is very cool. So here you can see our spline. You can be in uh, different modes here. So you can be in uh, right here, spline mode or object mode. So I can move the object as a whole, but now I can come in here and go to spline mode and I can have individual control points and I can move them individually. So you can use this to basically create pipes and hair and stuff. Uh, this was actually very tricky to do before, if not outright impossible. So now you have this new functionality, which is very, very cool. And on top of that, when it comes to animation side of things, we also have this now. So come here and they have the armature. And if you've worked with bones in 3D Studios Max, you got an idea what it's all about. Basically, these have um, these control the underlying uh, mesh that they're applied to. You can add multiple bones. So here I'm going to add another bone to it and then I add another bone to that. And basically you can create these uh, skeletons. So when something, something moves, the children are all manipulated with it and you rotate and bend and then they will ultimately bend and apply to the object that you are working with. Very cool stuff. Uh, so this, and then on top of that, they've added new tools to go with it for doing things like weight painting. Uh, so this controls uh, how much each bone you would paint if it was applied to a 3D model to show each bone how much weight it will have over the other bones that you are working or over the, the mesh that it's distorting. 
Uh, so this is a more traditional way of doing animation, and this has been added in Blockbench 5.0. So that's it for my little meager hands-on portion. What I want to show you now, this is the web version of Blockbench. So this is uh, the 4.1 uh, or something like that, 4.12.6. Uh, um, so this is what it looked like, and here is what the new update is. Now, quick glance, you're going to think, okay, that looks like, uh, oh, let me get rid of one of these. My control tab isn't switching between. All right, so here you can see there and there. So it just looks like it just got darker. But if you really look at it, there's a couple of other things going on here as well. They got more rounded corners. They switched out the way that uh, the icons work. So everything is a little bit cleaner and clearer on that level. But the big thing you're going to want to notice for the UI redesign is this. So I go back to the previous version. This is here and then handle like that. Now, oops, I went the wrong way. Here, we've got this option, and you can now attach multiple things. So if I wanted to move this over to the outliner, boom, I could drop that over and move it into the outliner area. Same thing here, I could do the same thing, or I could move it to uh, floating like this, or then I could again move it also to the outliner as well. So you got a lot more customization control over how the user interface ultimately works. So again, we had a, the facelifted interface. We've got the armature edition. We got the addition of splines, a pretty big update on the whole, in my humble opinion. So if you're interested, this is it. It's all started with the beta five release um, on this. So this is an open source project. This is from the GitHub releases. It's not really published anywhere else. So the new key features of this beta are the new design of the user interface, armature and mesh deformations, splines, uh, which we saw in action. Also, we got billboards, panel tabs, and uh, changes to the way themes are customized and more. Some more details about how armatures work. There's a breakdown of how splines work there. All the various different things they change with the user interface are here. Um, and then the only thing I didn't really cover was billboards, and I don't know that they covered billboards either. So I don't know exactly what they mean by that particular change uh, from the highlight, because they don't go into more detail about what, what exactly that means. And then since then, they've had two more uh, beta releases. What we're going to find is it's mostly like improvements to the way the armature systems works and the bone weight uh, weight painting for bones works. Uh, and then in terms of new features added in that release is they added a new normal map color picker, uh, quaternion uh, interpolation mode, and settings to toggle um, automatically loading textures as flipbooks. And then we've had one more beta just a couple of days ago. Uh, this is the beta three release and it's almost all uh, fixes and changes. So no new features in that particular version. But again, a very cool release. So if you're interested, Blockbench is completely free. Uh, you can download it for uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. OS, and then you'll notice also if we go back to the GitHub releases, the release section of the GitHub page, uh, there's a link here for the web app version. If you want to go ahead and just check this out in your browser, you can do it that way. Um, so again, open source project uh, available uh, up on GitHub. You like what they're doing, drop them yet another star because this is one of the coolest open source projects out there. And again, not my uh, way of modeling. I, I, once I got used to using something like Blender, this seems kind of backwards to me, but it, to people that especially don't, don't mesh with Blender and have simpler modeling needs, this thing is beautiful. And some of the works that it actually can create are pretty amazing. If you actually go see their gallery of things made with Blockbench, it, it's... Um, it's pretty staggering uh, what people can actually do with this. So it kind of reminds me, if anything, of Magic of Voxel. And some people have made some pretty damned amazing models for this guy out there. So you can see this is what you're capable of creating if you have talent, which I, I do not have any talent. So if you're interested in checking this one out, it is available at blockbench.net. Again, one more thing to remind you of, though. If you go to the download section, you will not find the 5.0 release. What you want to do is grab the installer version, run it, and then again, go into Blockbench like so, and then go into File, Preferences, Settings, Application, Update to Pre-Release, and it will automatically update you. And if you've got it downloaded already, you should just be able to turn that on, exit, and then come back in, but I'm not 100% certain because I used the portable version. I downloaded uh, this version the first time, and then it did not update for some reason. So it's one of those things to be aware of. If you want to go ahead and check out Blockbench, again, completely free, available for multiple different OSs. And again, if you go to the GitHub release page, uh, you will find the newest beta. You can click this link and check it out completely in the browser like so. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Blockbench 5, a major upgrade, a new armature, a new spline tool, new user interface, new other stuff as well. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.